nevertheless, you know, I, I, I could go on and, and, and I think I'm going to rob time of people that know more. I can't thank Facebook enough. I can't thank Shelly enough. I can't thank our commerce people enough. You know, we have truly, truly done something here that's going to give our citizens what we need so bad. Connectivity. Connectivity to the world. To the world. To be able to really market ourselves and our products and everything and just show everybody how great West Virginia truly is. So if Kevin could come up and he's going to tell us some neat stuff and I'll just sit back here and <laughs> watch you do your thing. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. And uh, I think we have a quick video introduction if we can do that to start. We are proud to be a global company, but our roots are right here in America, which is why we are committed to creating long-term economic growth in local communities around the country. You can see it in the size of our U.S.-based workforce, which currently numbers more than 26,000 people. And you can see it in the scale of investment we've made in the U.S. economy. Over $100 billion and counting. This includes major infrastructure projects, like building and operating data centers in 11 different states. They alone have contributed more than $5.8 billion in GDP since 2010. And not to mention promoting job growth. For every one job created on site, five additional jobs are supported elsewhere in the local economy. Small businesses are a big part of that. So to help them grow and thrive, we created a nationwide digital skills training program with a commitment to train one million by 2020. All across the country, we are making investments towards a brighter, more prosperous future. From jobs and infrastructure to commerce and entrepreneurship, we are helping the American economy grow. So uh, thank you again, uh, Governor. Uh, let me also thank Senator Capito, uh, Secretary Conch, uh, and in his absence, Senator Manchin, as well as all of the other public officials who are here today. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I know that each of you is work, working very hard to bring broadband to West Virginia, and we are delighted uh, today to partner with uh, the state to help make our part in helping build broad, bring broadband infrastructure to the state. So my name is Kevin Salvadori. I lead all of the network investments for Facebook around the world. So first, you know, broadband internet access, uh, it clearly drives economic growth and drives jobs. And, um, but around the country, there's still many underserved areas, including here in West Virginia. And we're very excited about our partnership with West Virginia, and we're very excited to bring long haul fiber to the state. So we serve over 2.7 billion people uh, uh, around the world, and Facebook's network infrastructure is absolutely critical in enabling all of those people to connect, to share, to discover, uh, and the network we're, we, we uh, plan on building in West Virginia will provide much needed scalable and resilient connectivity between our data centers and providing all those Facebook users with the best possible experience. However, when we innovate or invest in infrastructure, we also want to positively contribute to the broader community. So, you know, just in, as an example, we, we've designed a, the most efficient and effective data centers and servers. We, we started doing that 10 years ago. And then we open sourced all those designs and gave it to the community so people could be more efficient at doing things them, themselves. Um, we're a major investor in subsea infrastructure, which some of you may not know. So our Morea cable, uh, which connects North America uh, to Europe, is become has provided critical diversity to global internet traffic between the United States and Europe. And this build is also designed about how we can help enable the broader community. 
So if you want to think first about it, you really think of this investment in long haul fiber in West Virginia. It's almost like you know an, an interstate for the internet, and you very much think of it. The analogy um, absolutely plays well, and it's going to provide connectivity to major internet net exchanges uh, around the U.S. And so that that critical path is going to connect to some very important points, which is is very important. But we've also planned our design so that. Uh, telecommunications companies, regional providers, local providers can help connect into this and uh, they'll be able to provide you know, broadband to people who live and work in regions <coughs> around where we deploy our infrastructure. So it, 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 we think that will be an ultimate significant net benefit to broadband infrastructure in West Virginia. Uh, for us, when we do projects like this, we take a very pragmatic approach to uh, infrastructure. And as, as the governor mentioned, uh, I'd like to thank him and his team, particularly in the, in the commerce area, because they have been absolutely a pleasure uh, for us to work with, very practical, and enabling this to happen for us. So uh, I'd like to just thank everybody with the state who's been involved in working with our team to make this happen. Uh, we're really thrilled to be here today uh, in Charleston. It was a little challenging to get here last night, but we're, happy, we're very happy to be here. And then we really look forward to being here in the near future, not just when we break ground, but ultimately when we complete this infrastructure so it's able to be used by many people. So thank you so much. Senator, come and talk to us, please. Oh, thank you. Governor, uh, for being governor and doing, uh, having the vision and the energy and the foresight to know a good thing when you see it, and this is a great thing today. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Department of Commerce. They've done a great job uh, of talking with uh, Facebook folks and and crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. And seriously, in our conversations this morning, they. In comparative to, uh, or, or they just remarked how absolutely cooperative and uh, exceedingly happy we are to to be working in this direction. And I want to thank the Facebook folks. We've got Kevin, Kevin, Monique, um, Michelle, and Bo here, and uh, we appreciate you all. I know it's not your first visit for some of you, but we hope you'll come back many times. Uh, we, we would love to show you more of our wild and wonderful West Virginia. Uh, this is a great thing for us. I, I don't think it can be undersold. I don't think it can be uh, underemphasized. It, it, uh, it's something that I think uh, will help us do what I've been working to do through my Capito Connect plan, which is to get the connectivity to West Virginia. You have your Broadband Enhancement Council with Rock Hens doing a great job of uh, on showing that. He has a vision like you do, Governor, of making sure that everybody in the state can have the access that we need. I asked, uh, Kevin mentioned that, would you say 2.7 billion. billion, billion people around the world. In West Virginia, it's over 500,000 Facebook users in our state. I mean, that's almost a third of our, of our state, and it's probably um, growing every single day. So these substantial connectivity investments are absolutely critical to getting the business, tourism, agriculture, healthcare, education aspects of connectivity that we want so desperately here and that will help us um, grow and prosper here in the state. So I will have to say, I had the opportunity through my service in the Senate Commerce Committee to uh, question um, the founder of uh, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, when he came before the Congress. I was telling him this morning that there were 43 questioners because we had a combined uh, committees, uh, I think it was judicial, it was uh, finance and commerce. I was, so we had 43, I was number 42 to question because my seniority's were low over there. And I, you know, everything had been asked three or four times, but the one thing that's always burning with me is rural America and how do we get connectivity and we need every bit of help that we can possibly get. And I asked him at the time, I asked him for a commitment to be our partner in West Virginia. Look at us as a part of the Facebook family. And he had actually just visited West Virginia on his national tour when he had 
uh, when he was, I don't, he may still be doing that, I don't know, but he had just recently been in West Virginia. And he said to me at the time in the public hearing, he said, well, we're going to take this back and take a look at it. And so here we are today. Uh, so I want to thank him and Facebook. Whether it was ongoing before I had that conversation or not, we won't really get into that. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think we've had a lot to celebrate here today. Uh, there are a lot of federal opportunities for expansion of broadband through the USDA, through the Department of Commerce. Uh, we're working on it every day through my, I have a rural broadband caucus. But what this helps us do today is to go to our communities, to go to our internet service providers, our municipalities, whoever wants to expand broadband in their area where we don't have it, to say, look, we're going to have a major line coming through here. And if we're creative and use our heads and figure out a way to do it, this is going to uh, this is going to be like a quarter of the uh, three quarters of the way down the line in terms of connectivity. So again, Governor, thank you so much for your commitment, and thanks a joy to work with you always. And I want to thank again Facebook and the Department of Commerce for the great work. And I'd like to thank my office too because my office works very much with a lot of your your folks in your office, and also with the Facebook folks to make sure that today. Um, I'd like to thank also Governor. I know Governor Manchin's not here. Uh, but uh, I know he's very interested in the project as well. Thank you all very much. Well, let me, uh, let me try to summarize. And you know me, I'm, I'm the folksy guy all the time. I'm the guy that would say, the thing that I'm the most pleased about is just this. You know, I go back to the cows. And, and I think about, you know, the cows out there in the field. And I've told you this before, but if someone were to come to me and say, how many cows are out there? Well, you know, there's times within government, and I think Kevin would agree, there's times within government that what they want to do is count the legs and divide by four to figure out how many cows are out there. You know, well, in West Virginia, at least today, all we're going to do is count the eggs up the cows. And we're just going to say there's 39 in the mountain. Or in Shelly's situation, because she was the 42nd person to question <laughs> Mark, there's 42 of them out there. And, and let me just say that just that what all that means is this. Is I think Kevin would say a lot of times they go to states, and the reason maybe that they're right here right now is that through our Commerce Department, through our changing of laws to, uh, to allow stuff within the interstate, you know, corridors and all that kind of stuff that we have today, the right of ways and everything, we absolutely know, we know how important this is to our citizens. You know, we know how hard Senator Capto's work, and we know how committed Facebook is, and we know that the project is surely going to cost significantly more than a big bread box. Now, with all that being said, we absolutely have got something here that will open us up, will be the beginning of something that is really, truly significant. So, Kevin, we thank you. And Shelly, we love you and thank you for all you've done. And all of y'all, you know, whether it be Michelle or Kevin, or was it, I forgot somebody else's name. <laughs> but, but anyway, for all of you, we really appreciate you. And Secretary Gaunt, thank you, sir. And you know, Mike, thank you for all you're doing. And just uh, thank all those that have made this a reality. I mean, crying out loud, this is great stuff. So again, we'll answer your questions. Feel free to ask, and if I can't answer them, Kevin, you got to bail me out. So, <laughs> and, and, and we're not going to take too many questions in regard to the project because uh, Kevin and them, you know, we want to honor what, what their request are. Yes, sir. I might have missed it. Is there a specific dollar amount here? I, I, they don't really want me to say that, but there. But I think I think it would be fair to say this that. Uh, to repair the dome, you know, to repair the dome that we're working on costs a lot of money. And this is a multiple of repairing the dome several times. So I'll just leave it at that. 
Yes, sir. Are there any specific projects in mind or specific places you're going to lay down lines? Well, Mark, I mean, I mean, uh, Jay, let me let me say this. The, uh, I think Shelley probably said it the best. Once this this artery is put in, and it's going to have availability for us to do more within the artery than, than because we're going to space in the artery. But once the artery is put in, then Central Capito is correct. There are many different opportunities, you know, as far as grant opportunities, federal grant opportunities to do all kinds of different things and everything. But today, for us, it's, it's almost, and she hit the nail right on the head, you know, I'm thinking, well, you're not going to get the grant to do anything because you really can't do anything if you get the grant, you know, today. And so, so the, the net of the whole thing is you then you have a grant to nowhere, a bridge to nowhere. So you're not going to get the grant. You know, but now with this main artery going through, it just opens us up for a lot of a lot of opportunities. Is there a timeline or you have to give the timeline? Um, yeah, so we're, we're gonna build this in the next 18 to 24 months. Very good stuff. Does so that start building it or complete it? No, we will complete it. What exactly is the plan? I don't understand. You said long haul fiber, but can you say something? Well, sure. Um, so now don't y'all beat Kevin up because he <laughs> he's been so kind and he, you know. So. These major arteries from a Facebook perspective are used to connect our data centers. So we will be connecting with data centers in Ohio and Virginia and North Carolina. And so West, West Virginia is a really important connectivity point for that infrastructure. And so this is basically going to be a very, very high capacity fiber cable that we build in West Virginia to connect those things. And it's like an artery, as the governor said, that you can connect to. And, and let me add this to it. Kevin committed. He's going to build a data center in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't got, say that. Eric got, 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 got your rock solid commitment. He said, this is, this is the first step. This is the first step. That's my next question. That's <laughs> exactly right. We're going to get that done. This is the first step. Yes, for the Luddites of the world, I mean, what does this do for people on the ground here? Um, so, I, I think solving broad can, broadband connectivity, there's not a silver bullet. It's, there's not a single solution to it. So, it. so you need actual access that comes local to people, you need middle mile infrastructure, and then you need major connectivity. And frankly, you know, there hasn't been major artery builds in the United States in 20 years. Okay, so this is one of the first significant ones in that period of time. And West Virginia wasn't built through 20 years ago. And so this provides one key element of making that happen. But our intent over time, you know, after announcing it today, is to work with regional and local internet service providers to figure out how we can work with them so they can get access to the artery on a reasonable term so they can lower their costs and help build out more broadband infrastructure and access for people. What's the plan for navigating the physical terrain, laying, actually laying the wire through mountainous regions? It was, so our engineering team at Facebook loves really super difficult problems. <laughs> and so we've thought a lot about how we're going to engineer that to, to solve that. But we're, we're confident we can do that. It's not going to be the easiest build um, uh, that we've ever done, but we're pretty confident that we can make it happen. There was another recent announcement by another company talking about putting broadband through the state, pretty much connecting the same area. Um, are you going to work with them, uh, alongside them, or just completely? So we, we, we partner with that organization on several other things that we do and have a good relationship with them. These two builds are, are different and in different areas of the state. So it's actually, frankly, a double win for the state to end up with more than one artery.
Let's check time for care. <laughs> summed up, you know, the very best in the saying, there's no one thing that can be done that will solve our connectivity in, for everybody in the state of West Virginia. But this is a big, this is a big start, you know, and, and this has all kinds of offspring that can happen from it. This is a big start. And, and like I said, it's a big commitment for them to just spend the dollars in West Virginia to construct. It's a big deal. And, and so, uh, big commitment. And I salute our commerce people and thank you again so much. All of you, thank you.
Senate will please come to order. The Senate will please come to order. All those not having privileges of the floor will please vacate the chamber. And with those on the floor and our guests in the gallery, please rise as we are led in prayer this morning by Pastor Jeff Davenport of the First Baptist Church of Hurricane in Hurricane, West Virginia. And then please remain standing as we are led in the pledge this morning by the junior senator from the fourth, Pastor Davenport. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done here on earth in this chamber as it is in heaven. You told us to ask for our daily provision from you, and so we ask, please grant this Senate your favor so that they might accomplish your will here in this place this week and forward. You also told us to pray, forgive us our trespasses, and so, God, we ask your forgiveness. Forgive us for the times we so presumptively and perhaps even arrogantly place our agendas above your word. Forgive us for the times we are insensitive to the very ones you've called us to care for and lead. Forgive us for the times we value our gifts and connections more than your provision and glory. We humble ourselves now before your mighty and merciful hand and plead that you remove not the lampstand from this chamber. We place these courageous men and women and their staffs who serve us and you into your capable hands. Please grant them your favor. And we ask this in your name. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davenport. The junior senator from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President. Would all those in the gallery and those here on the Senate floor please join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Reading of the journal. West Virginia Legislature, Saturday, March 2nd, 2019. The Senate met at 922 a.m. The senior senator from the 4th requests unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that it be approved as having been read. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. Introduction of guest. On behalf of the Senate, it is my pleasure to welcome our honorary pages for the day. Some are seated in the front, some are standing in the rear. If you would please stand as your name is called. As guest of the Senator from Boone County, we have Ryan Butcher. As guest of the Senator from Nicholas County, Walker Swagger. As guest of the Senator from Harrison County, Holly Rogers, Katie Rogers, Katie Finstemacher, and Kylie Finstemacher. As guest of the Senator from Tucker, Trenton Dean and Tyler Lannon. And as guest of the Senator from Pre Preston, Dominic Amptower, Madeline Fisher, Madison Rhodes, and Riley Staggs. If they would all please rise in the Senate, give them a warm welcome. Thank you. You may be seated. Further introductions, the junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Senate, it's my pleasure and yours to introduce our doc for the day. In the rear of the chamber, we have with us Dr. Victoria Schumann. If you wouldn't mind standing, let the Senate give you a warm welcome. The Senator from Harrison County. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of my senior senator from Braxton, it's my pleasure and yours, sir, to introduce the parents who came down with our pages uh, from up in our district today. I, I got to take a second. This might be a very unique moment in the Senate because our four pages, within our four pages, are two sets of twins. So I'm going to have them stand just because of that unique aspect of, uh, of their presence here today with Holly and Katie Rogers. If you two will stand, is their mother, Michelle Rogers, and with Carly and Kylie F Fenstermacher, is their mother, Julie Fenstermacher. Please make them feel welcome in our two sets of twins. The Senator from Wetzel County. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm pleased today to introduce to you a group of citizens of West Virginia who are concerned about our suicide rates in West Virginia. They're headed up by Michelle Toman, the chair and founder of AFSP West Virginia, 
and Barry Fawcett, Director of Prevent Suicide, West Virginia. If that group would please stand in the Senate, make them a, give them a warm welcome. <laughs> and while they while they are still standing, I want to read a few facts that have come about. In the state of West Virginia in 2017, there were 393 deaths by suicide. That ranks seventh in the nation. It's the second leading cause of death for ages 15 to 34, the third leading cause of death for 35 to 44, and the and sixth leading cause of death for ages 45 to 54. These people are trying to do what they can to take these figures down. It'd be nice to have them all the way down to zero. So once again, let's give these people a warm, warm welcome. Further introductions, the Senator from Marshall County. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to um, welcome to the Senate a couple of kids that uh, got up early this morning with me to drive down here. Uh, my daughter, Megan, and my son, Matt, uh, got out of bed. If they'd stand in the Senate, make them welcome. Thanks. Senator from Nicholas County. Thank you, Mr. President. It's my privilege uh, today on behalf of the, my fellow senator from Upshur and yours to welcome a couple of people, or uh, three people actually, that are accompanying our page from Nicholas County, uh, Walker Swagger. His mother and father and little sister, uh, who uh, I have a great affinity for, we go to church together in Nicholas County and uh, we just have a good time together. If Jason and Brandy and Reagan would please stand and if the Senate would please extend a very warm Senate welcome. Senator from Preston County. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's my pleasure, and on behalf of the Senator from Tucker County, we are pleased to have with us the parents and chaperones of many of our pages today, which are from Kaiser Middle School. And in the gallery today, Cheyenne and Missy Lannon, Sherry Amtower, Randy Fisher, Eli and Lisa Rhodes, and Lynn Staggs. If they would all stand in the Senate, please make them welcome. Further introductions? Further introductions. Further introductions. Communications from the House. The Clerk of the House announced that the House amended the title only and passed the bill as it relates to committee substitute for Senate Bill 310, establishing certain requirements for dental insurance. Message be received. A junior senator from the 17th. We're doing another uh, Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate concur with the amendments to Senate Bill 310. Junior Senator from the 17th moves that the Senate concur in the House amendments to Senate Bill 310. Is there discussion? Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. The purpose of the bill is to establish requirements for dental insurance. The House amended uh, amendment corrects uh, title defects only. I urge passage. Further discussion? Not. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the motion adopted. The question now is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? If not, all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 33 yeas, zero nays, one absent and not voting, more than the majority of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective July 1, 2019, and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Junior Senator from the 17th 
request unanimous consent or moves that the bill be made effective July 1, 2019 and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make so effective. Is there objection? Chair hears none on this question remaining 33 yeas, zero nays, one absent and not voting, more than two-thirds of those elected having voted in the affirmative if I declare the bill effective July 1, 2019. Clerk will communicate the action and send it to the House. The Clerk of the House announced that the House amended and passed committee substitute for Senate Bill 408, determining indigency for public defender services. Message be received. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate concur with House amendment to Senate Bill 408. Junior senator from the 17th moves that the Senate concur in the House amendments to Senate Bill 408. Is there discussion? The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. The purpose of the bill it, uh, added language that permitted circuits with a trial court administrator to have the office of the administrator make determinations of indigency. The bill authorizes the court administrator for a circuit court to determine whether a person charged with a criminal offense is eligible for services of a public defender. Uh, the amendment is purely technical and is consistent with the purpose of the bill. I urge passage. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. Not all those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the motion adopted. Question now is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? <laughs> if not, all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question, there being 34 yeas, zero nays, zero absent, not voting, more than the majority of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. The Clerk of the House announced that the House amended and passed committee substitute for Senate Bill 641 relating to primary care support. Message be received. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate concur with amendments made to Senate Bill 641. Junior Senator from the 17th moves that the Senate concur in the House amendments to Senate Bill 641. Is there discussion? The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. The purpose of this bill is to change the primary car revolving loan fund to a grant fund. The House added language providing the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Resources with the ability to use funds within this account for activities in support of rural and primary care. I urge passage. Is there further discussion? If not, all those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the motion adopted. The question now is shall the bill pass? Is there further discussion? If not, all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question, there being 34 yay, zero nay, zero absent not voting, more than the majority of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective from passage. I request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Junior senator from the 17th moves that the bill be made effective from passage and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Is there objection? Chair, here's none on this questioner being 34 yay, zero nay, zero absent and not voting, more than two-thirds of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill effective from passage. Clerk will communicate the action and send it to the House. The Clerk of the House announced the passage by that body of committee substitute for House Bill 2020, the budget bill. Message be received. A junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the... Request unanimous consent that the bill be taken up for immediate consideration. Committee reference be dispensed with and the bill read a first time. Is there objection? Chair hears now. Clerk will read the bill a first time. Committee substitute for House Bill 2020, the budget bill. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Further communications from the House? No, sir. Communications from the Executive? There are none. Reports from standing committees? Your Committee on Rules has had under consideration Senate Concurrent Resolution 48, requesting study of eliminating use of minimum wage for people with intellectual, developmental, or other disabilities, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it be adopted, respectfully submitted, Mitch Carmichael, Chairman ex officio. Report will be received. 
Your Committee on Rules has had under consideration the engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2083, providing an identification card for released inmates who do not have a West Virginia identification card or driver's license. With amendments from the Committee on the Judiciary pending, now on second reading, having been ready having been referred to the Committee on Rules on February 20th, 2019, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass, respectfully submitted Mitch Carmichael, Chairman Ex Officio. Report will be received. Your Committee on Economic Development has had under consideration engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2420, establishing the Mountaineer Trail Network Recreation Authority, and has amended same, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary, respectfully submitted, Mark R. Maynard, Chair. Report will be received. Judi The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent that the second reference to the Committee on Judiciary as to this bill be dispensed with. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. So ordered. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. Rick. Uh, President, our question is consent that the bill be taken up for immediate consideration. Can we reference we dispense with and the bill read a first time? Is there objection? Chair, here's none. Clerk will read the bill a first time. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2420, establishing the Mountaineer Trail Network Recreation Authority. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Your Committee on Finance has had under consideration engrossed House Bill 2515, exempting the sale and installation of mobility enhancing equipment from the sales and use tax, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass. Respectfully submitted, Craig Blair, Chair. Report will be received. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question is consent that the committee reference be dispensed with. Committee I apologize. Request unanimous consent that the bill be taken up for immediate consideration. The bill be read a first time. Is there objection? Chair is none. Clerk will read the bill a first time. Engrossed House Bill 2515, exempting the sale and installation of mobility enhancing equipment from the sales and use tax. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Your Committee on the Judiciary has had under consideration engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2617 relating to the form for making offer of optional uninsured or underinsured coverage by insurers and as amended same and engrossed House Bill 2647 Self Storage Limited License Act and as amended same and reports the same back with recommendation that they each do pass as amended respectfully submitted Charles S. Trump the fourth chair. Report will be received. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent that the bills be taken up for immediate consideration and read a first time. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. Clerk will read the bill a first time. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2617 relating to the form for making offer of optional uninsured or underinsured coverage by insurers. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2647 Self Storage Limited License Act. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. That's all I have, sir. Reports from select committees. There are none. Introduction of bills. There are none. Resolutions. Senate Resolution 67 by Senators Baldwin, Mann, Hamilton, Lindsay, Hardesty, and Swope, recognizing the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question unanimous consent that the resolution be taken up for immediate consideration. Committee reference be dispensed with and the resolution placed upon its adoption. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. Clerk will read the resolution. Senate Resolution 67, recognizing the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine for excellence in med medical education and its many contributions to the state of West Virginia. Question for the Senate is adoption of resolution. Is there discussion? The Senator from Greenbrier County. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate it very much. Um, I'm proud to stand in support of my friends and neighbors who are in the back of the chamber here today. They are the nation's leading provider of primary rural, rural primary docks. I want to say that once again just to make sure the body understands that here in West Virginia, in southern West Virginia, the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine is the nation's leading provider of rural primary care docs. We may not top many lists, but we top that one and that's one to be proud of. Um, when I attended the graduation ceremony uh, this past year, one of the members of the first ever uh, class at WVSOM told stories about what the initial campus looked like. <laughs> and it was fascinating. Uh, she said it was, a, it was a single building, we had volunteer faculty, and the anatomy lab in the basement had no ventilation. <laughs> um, the O School um, has come a long way a very long way since those days. Um, they've grown to be an international leader in rural medicine. They're also a respected local employer uh, in the Greenbrier Valley, um, providing good jobs in a growing field. They treat their employees well, they pay them a good salary, and they provide meaningful work each day. Um, I would be remiss, I think, if I did not mention the statewide impact that they have through their statewide campus. They place third and fourth year students at uh, hospitals across the state of West Virginia to provide primary care services uh, for communities in need. And 80% of those residents stay in the communities where they complete their program. So these folks are sticking around to serve. And our very own majority leader is uh, a graduate of the O School. Um, Dr. Jim Nimmons is here today for the first time as the president. Um, he climbed the ladder all the way up to the top seat. Uh, and in his first year, he has challenged the school to live out its mission. And I can say to you, Mr. President, that this school is living out its mission each and every day advancing uh, medicine in West Virginia. So I urge my colleagues to support this resolution as we welcome Dr. Nimitz and his entire team here to the Senate today. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to echo the uh, sentiments from my colleague from Greenbrier. I would not have enough time in the session to uh, speak of all the accolades and the, the wonderful things that this school has done, uh, not only for myself, but really for the entire state of West Virginia. Uh, one thing I, I did uh, feel that I had to uh, say is that there is a a certain um, excitement. I think uh, Dr. Nimitz has very big shoes to fill. We've had wonderful leadership at the O School, and that's um, why we have succeeded uh, as much as we have. But um, there are a few professors, teachers, all of us have in our memory banks that um, always bring a special uh, something, somebody that uh, exhibits everything that you'd want uh, out of a professor or a teacher, but but has not only a passion for the students, but an absolute um, longing for success of those students, not just in their uh, professional lives, but their personal lives. And so to see uh, Dr. Nimitz uh, get the president uh, position is just uh, makes me ecstatic. And when I talk to fellow alumni, um, there is just an excitement throughout the state that um, he is now at the helm and leading the O School, and I'm sure they have m many, many, many more years of uh, wonderful success, and uh, I, I support the resolution fully and wholeheartedly. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. If not, the Senator from Marion County. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent that the comments by the Senator from Greenbrier and the Senator, the junior Senator from the 17th, be printed in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. Question now is shall is adoption of the resolution. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate stand in brief recess for the purposes of presenting this resolution. Junior Senator from the 17th moves that the Senate stand in brief recess for the purpose of presenting this resolution. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the Senate in brief recess to present this resolution.
Senate will please come to order. The Senate will please come to order. The Senator from Nicholas County seeks recognition. Thank you, Mr. President. Request unanimous consent to return to second order of business. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Senator may proceed. Introduction of guests. Thank you, Mr. President. Setting in the uh, in the North Gallery are a couple of very special people. Is the uh, Economic Development Director from Randolph County and his daughter, uh, Robbie Morse, and his daughter. If they would please rise, and if the Senate would please extend a very warm welcome to them today. Further resolutions? No, sir. Motions? Petitions? There are none. Unfinished business? There is none. Bills on third reading? Committee substitute for Senate Bill 150, the budget bill. The bill is advanced to third reading with the right to amend. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate Bill 150 live for one day while retaining its place on the calendar. Junior Senator from the 17th request unanimous consent that Senate Bill 150 live for one day retaining its place on the calendar. Is there objection? Chair hears none, so ordered. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2183 clarifying where a charge of DUI may be brought against an individual. Third reading of the bill. Question for Senator shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, House Bill 2183 amends a single section of the state code, excuse me, committee substitute for House Bill 2183, and the section is 17C52, that's our DUI statute in West Virginia. Uh, the amendment to this bill will provide an exception to some of the DUI offenses set forth in the statute, and the exception would read as follows. As used in subsections E, F, G, H, I, and J of this section, the words drives a vehicle in this state do not mean or include driving or operating a vehicle solely and exclusively on one's own property. Uh, Mr. President, I'll be happy to try to answer questions. Otherwise, I urge the passage of the bill. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? Not. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 25 yeas, 9 nays, 0 absent and not voting, more than a majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Clerk will communicate the, excuse me, clerk has a title amendment. Committee on the Judiciary move to amend the title of the bill. Question for Senate is adoption of title amendment. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it. I declare the title amendment adopted. Clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2531, permitting trained nurses to provide mental health services in a medication-assisted treatment program. Third reading of the bill. Question before the Senate is, shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? Senator from Marshall County. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, committee substitute for House Bill 2531, basically permits advanced practice nurses specializing in psych mental health and psychiatry CAQ certified physician assistants to serve as counselors at medication assisted treatment programs. Mr. President, I urge passage. Is there further discussion? Not. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 34 yeas, zero nays, zero absent and not voting, more than a majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2609 relating to presumptions of abandonment and indication of ownership and property. Third reading of the bill. Question before the Senate is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? The Senator from Morgan County. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I get into an explanation of this, I would seek the ruling of the chair pursuant to Rule 43 of the Rules of the Senate as to whether or not I should be excused from voting or required to vote upon this measure. I've mentioned before, Mr. President, that I serve as a director of a community bank. This bill could have some effect upon uh, banking operations. Thank you. In response to your inquiry, and as I understand your situation, you are a member of a class and therefore will be required to vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee substitute for House Bill 2609 amends a single section of the state code, and it's in Chapter 36, Article 8. And Article 8 of Chapter four, uh, 36 is the Uniform Unclaimed Property Act, and Section 2 of that act is uh, delineates presumptions of abandonment when property is presumed to be abandoned. Uh, the uh, change in the law that would be affected by this bill is in subsection D and uh, provides that an indication of an owner's interest in property includes, and there are a list of items that it includes, this would add a new one and it would, uh, the new inclusion would be for demand savings and time deposits held by a financial institution, any indication of the owner's interest in any demand savings and time deposit held by the financial organization for that owner is an indication of the owner's interest in all demand, savings, and time deposits held by that financial organization. In other words, uh, it would be a circumstance where the law would not have to presume abandonment uh, as to certain assets uh, that are held in a financial institution uh, and would would see would mean that the determination applies to all the assets held by an owner uh, in a financial institution. Mr. President, I'd be happy to try to answer questions. Otherwise, I urge the passage of the bill. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? If not, all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the bill. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question are being 34 yay, 0 nay, 0 absent not voting. More than a majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Clerk will communicate the action and send it to the House. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2907 requiring a form of certified commitment order to the Division of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Third reading of the bill. Question before the Senate is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. House Bill 2907 uh, amends a single section of the state code. It would be Chapter 62, Article 7, Section 10. And the bill would create a new section in the state code designated same chapter and article as Section 10A. Uh, this bill addresses certified commitment orders that are used and signed when people are uh, given sentences of incarceration either to the state prison system within the Division of Corrections or now to a regional jail authority. Um, so members will remember uh, we amended the one section uh, either last year or the year before but last year we also uh, passed a reorganization bill that consolidated the, the uh, boards and duties of the Division of Corrections, the Regional Jail Authority, et cetera. So this bill is necessary to update and modernize the forms, the Regional Jail and the Department of Corrections commitment forms, and it will require that the new forms be uh, put into use on July 1st of this year, 2019. There's some other technical cleanup in the bill, but that's it. Mr. President, be happy to try to answer questions. Otherwise, I urge the bill's passage. Is there further discussion? Not. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine.
Does every member voted? Does every member voted? So the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 34 yeas, zero nays, zero absent not voting, more than the majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. Clerk has a title amendment. Committee on the Judiciary move to amend the title of the bill. Question for the Senate is adoption of the title amendment. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the title amendment adopted. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective from passage. and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Junior senator from the 17th moves that the bill be made effective from passage and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Is there objection? Chair hears none. On this question being 34 yeas, zero nays, zero absent and not voting, more than two-thirds of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill effective from passage. Clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2975 relating to imposition of sexual acts on persons incarcerated. Third reading of the bill. Question for the Senate is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee substitute for House Bill 2975, as it was amended by the Senate yesterday, uh, now amends two sections of the state code. Uh, they are both in Article 8B of Chapter 61. 61, of course, is our criminal code. Article 8B is uh, sexual offenses. Uh, Section 2 is amended, which provides a definition of the term lack of consent. And Section 10 is amended, which expands uh, the elements of an offense that's already a crime. But in West Virginia, under current law, it's, it's a crime, it's a felony for a person to have sexual intercourse or sexual contact with someone who is confined in a prison or jail. Uh, in other words, the, the law deems such people to be absolutely incapable of consent. So there's no defense of uh, a, a person charged uh, with that offense cannot say or argue or contend that the victim consented to having the sexual intercourse or contact. That's already current law. This bill will expand that a bit to uh, extend that prohibition to any person working or volunteering in an alternative sentence program authorized by the provisions of Article 11C of Chapter 62 as part of his employment volunteer duties he supervises he or she supervises program participants so if somebody is sentenced to day report center or something like that as part of a sentence uh, it is a felony for somebody who supervises that person to have sexual intercourse or sexual contact with them. There's no defense of consent because they are under the authority and supervision of our court system. Mr. President, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Otherwise, I urge the passage of this bill. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. Not all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 34 yeas, zero nays, zero absent not voting, more than the majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The clerk has a title amendment. The committee on the judiciary moved to amend the title of the bill. Question before the Senate is adoption of the title amendment. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the title amendment adopted. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Engrossed House Bill 3083, adding temporary work during the legislative session as exclusion to the term employment for purposes of unemployment compensation. Third reading of the bill. Question for the Senate is shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. House Bill 3083 amends a single section of the state code, and it's in the unemployment chapter. It amends Chapter 21A, Article 1A, Section 17, and that's a uh, Article 1A is defi a definition section, and uh, the section heading for Section 17 
addresses exclusions from employment. In other words, it lists things that are not considered employment for purposes of that chapter. And what is added to the law if this bill becomes law is an exclusion for employees serving as temp on a temporary basis for the legislature during or in support of the legislative session. So the effect of this bill essentially is that uh, per diem legislative employees are not going to be able to file for or receive unemployment compensation at the end of the legislative session when their duties end. I'll be happy to try to answer questions. Otherwise, I urge passage of the bill. Is there further discussion? The junior or senior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the senator from Morgan yield? Senator yield? Senator, yeah, I'm, Senator, I'm reviewing this language that we're putting in the bill, and, and I understand and support what we're trying to do, but the language says that it's, it's excluding an employee serving on a temporary basis for the legislature during or in support of the legislative section. I guess my question is, is what, what are we grabbing by putting in or in support of in there? Well, I suppose, I don't know that if it, that it, that those words expand it beyond. Uh, I mean, I suppose you'd have a temporary employee who's providing support to the legislature before or after the session, and that those words would reach that temporary employment as well. That's what I think that would do. Okay, so are, are there typically a class of employees who provide support for the, for the legislative session before or after, but not during the session? Refer to our clerk on that. Uh, you know, we did do a pay resolution, I, and I, what I don't know, I don't mean to be flippant in my answer, what I don't know is whether we have temporary employees whose duties extend beyond the exact 60 days of the legislative session, either at the front end or the back end. Well, I would imagine we do have those, but, but I, what I guess, I was just trying to wrestle with what that phrase captured that the rest of it didn't, and maybe, maybe the answer is nothing. Uh, maybe it's nothing, but I think, to, to the Senator's point, I think it would capture people um, who are hired by the legislature on a temporary basis, uh, either the House or the Senate, I guess, or the Joint Committee, uh, but they're temporary employees, um, but, and for work that extends by how, however much beyond the adjournment sine da of the, the houses of the legislature or starts before the commencement of the session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further discussion? The senator from Boone County. Will the senator from Morgan continue to yield? Senator yields. Senator does yield. Yes. I, I just want to make sure that I understand what we're doing with this. So uh, a, a per diem person working during the session itself, the 60-day session, say that person gets hurt while working up here. Uh, we've just heard of some people <laughs> being hurt, falling down, I and mean, there's a lot of marble here. Can they get, uh, you know, again, uh, employment compensation for that if they get hurt while they're working per yeah. diem? In, in my reading of the statute, that's sort of a, that's a separate question. In other words, this, this statute addresses unemployment. It's in the unemployment compensation yes. chapter, okay. not the workers' compensation okay. chapter. So, unless there's some other exclusion, my answer would be that if somebody working for us, working for the legislature during a legislative session, suffered an injury at work, um, he or she should be eligible. Let me just back up and say my my knowledge isn't that strong on that. I will say nothing in this bill would prevent that person from receiving or applying for or receiving workers' compensation benefits. What the bill would do is say when the session ends and the job terminates, you're not eligible to apply for unemployment benefits. Thank you. Understand. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? Not. All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine.
Does every member voted? Does every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question are being 31 yeas, 3 nays, 0 absent and not voting. More than the majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Engrossed House Bill 3148, making a supplementary appropriation to the Department of Health and Human Resources, Division of Human Services. Third reading of the bill. The question for the Senate is, shall the bill pass? Is there discussion? The senior senator from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President. This supplemental takes $53 million from unappropriated general revenue funds for fiscal year 2019 and reappropriates them to the medical services line item within the Division of Human Services. We passed a similar bill earlier this year, Senate Bill 674. Uh, Mr. President, I urge passage. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. Not all those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question being 32 yeas, 2 nays, 0 absent and not voting, more than a majority of those present and more than a majority of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective for passage on question unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Junior senator from the 17th moves that the bill be made effective from passage and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Is there objection? Chair ears not on this questioner being 32 yeas, 2 nays, 0 absent and not voting, more than two-thirds of those elected having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill effective from passage. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Are there further bills on third reading? No, sir. Bills on second reading? Engrossed House Bill 2311, exempting short-term license holders to submit information to the State Tax Commission once the term of the permit is expired. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on Government Organization moved to amend the bill by striking out everything after the enacting clause. The senior senator from the 15th. Mr. President, I request unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. Senator may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. The amendment offered by the Committee on Government Organization and adopted by the Committee on Finance clarifies that nothing in the bill prevents the tax commissioner from auditing, auditing the books and records of a license holder or permit holder to ensure compliance. Mr. President, I urge passage of the amendment. Excuse me. Adoption of the amendment. Is there further discussion? Further discussion. Not the question for the Senate is adoption of the amendment as explained by the senior senator from the 15th. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2362, the Ardella Memori Miller Memorial Act. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on the Judiciary moved to amend the bill by striking out everything after the enacting clause. The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent for leave to uh, explain the Judiciary Committee amendment in lieu of having it read, and I believe there's pending at least one amendment to the amendment. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The Senator may proceed. All right, Mr. President, the, uh, thank you. Uh, the Judiciary Committee amendment is a strike and insert amendment for the entire bill. Uh, and the bill amends two sections of the state code. That is true as to the Judiciary Committee strike and insert amendment as well. Um, when the Judiciary Committee considered the bill, uh, it decided that the language uh, which said any voter who is confined uh, was ambiguous and what the intent of the bill really meant to deal with was voters who become confined within seven days prior to an election. So that was the change adopted uh, by the Judiciary Committee strike and insert amendment. So I would urge adoption of the amendment. Are there amendments to the amendment? Yes, sir. Senators Stallings and Trump move to amend the amendment on page the 3, The Senator from one. Boone County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? 
chair hears none, the senator may proceed. Thank you. This uh, simply adds, after the word physician, uh, physician assistants or advanced practice registered nurse would be able to attest that the uh, voter is uh, confined and not able to make it to uh, urge adoption of the amendment to the amendment. It, further discussion? The senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. I would also speak in favor of the amendment uh, and uh, thank and compliment the Senator from Boone for uh, bringing, bringing it to the body's attention yesterday. This, I think, will make the bill uh, function a little more efficiently for people who are in need of that sort of uh, early uh, emergency voting. Further discussion? Not. The question before the Senate is adoption of the amendment to the amendment as offered by the senator from Boone County. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the amendment to the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the amendment? No, sir. The question before the Senate is adoption of the amendment as amended as offered by the senator from Morgan County. Is there further discussion? Not. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the amendment adopted as amended. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not. Bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2405, imposing a health care related provider tax on certain health care organizations. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on Finance moved to amend the bill on pages 2 through 4 by striking out all of, subsection, all of section 3 and inserting in lieu thereof a new section designated... The senior senator from the 15th. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read and that all the amendments be considered as one. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The senator may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. The amendment is of technical in nature and it alphabetizes the definitions removing the numbering of the def excuse me removing the numbering of definitions to make the them consistent with the drafting protocols and also replaces incorrectly placed decimal points where commas were intended in certain figures i urge adoption of the amendment is there further discussion not all those in favor will say aye those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. A clear committee amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not. Bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2439 relating to fire service equipment and training funds for volunteer and part volunteer fire companies. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2509 clarifying that theft of a controlled substance is a felony. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Not the bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2525, Tobacco Cessation Therapy Access Act. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on Health and Human Resources moved to amend the, the bill. The Senator from two. Marshall County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent to explain the amendments in lieu of having them read and that all amendments be considered as one. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The Senator may proceed. House Bill 2525 is a bill that permits a pharmacist to dispense tobacco cessation therapy under a standing prescription drug order. The First Amendment requires that the Commissioner of the Bureau for Public Health or designee shall prescribe the test tobacco cessation therapy. Uh, it changed a may from a shall, and the Commissioner of Bureau of Health was okay for that. She, she was present in the, uh, the committee meeting. Uh, secondly, uh, the amendment clarifies that the Board of Pharmacy regulates the pharmacist that dispenses a tobacco cessation, non-controlled prescription medication, over-the-counter medications, or other services that are related to this act. Mr. President, I uh, urge adoption. Is there further discussion? Not. All those in favor of the committee amendment, as explained by the Senator from Marshall, will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the committee amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2530, creating a voluntary certification for recovery residences. 
Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question is consent that the bill over one day while retaining its place on the calendar. Is there objection? Chair is none, so ordered. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2538, providing banking services for medical cannabis. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2600, relating to publication of sample ballots. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The committee on the judiciary moved to amend the bill by striking out everything after the enacting clause. The Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question is consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Senator may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Judiciary Committee amendment to House Bill 2600 is a strike and insert amendment to the entire bill. Uh, the bill, the amendment uh, would amend uh, sections of the state code, uh, chapter 3, article 4A, section 11A would be amended. Also, 4A3, 4A15 is amended. 3510 would be amended. And 3513 would be amended. These all relate to uh, the ballot. And uh, so, under the strike and insert amendment, I'm sorry, there's another section amended, uh, 3513A and 363 are amended. So, um, the first the sections, the ones in Article 5A, relate to the order of the ballot uh, in the primary election. And the bill will reorder the ballot so that uh, judicial races in West Virginia, which since 2015, the enactment by the legislature in 2015, have been on a nonpartisan ballot, uh, so that the judicial races will appear on the ballot now in the primary election uh, within the ballot uh, between state and county offices. Uh, that's where they go. Uh, currently, they're at the very end. And so this will order them, uh, because they are actually full elections, you know, and not nominating procedures, it'll order them above the county ballot, um, below the national and state tickets. Uh, but uh, different from current law, current law has them all the way at the end of everything, after delegates to the National Convention and state party executive committees and all that sort of thing. Uh, these are uh, full-fledged elections now and they occur in May. So we move them up on the ballot uh, between the state and county ticket. The other thing that the bill does, it relates to the uh, publication, uh, excuse me, the strike and insert amendment, the publication of the ballot, and it clarifies that the uh, size of the, it's, you know, current law says no less than 65% of the actual size of the ballot at the discretion of the ballot commissioners. So the new language here says provided that in counties where an electronic voting system has been adopted, the facsimile sample ballot may be a photographic reproduction of the absentee ballot. So what we found out apparently is that because of the size of the screens on some of these voting machine systems, uh, some counties were publishing uh, to meet that size requirement, 65% of actual size, pages and pages and pages in the newspaper of the uh, sample ballot when it was published. And uh, there was one other aspect of that uh, that related to, that's right, we made change so that if there are multiple districts uh, within an area served by the newspaper, instead of reproducing the whole ballot each time, they can uh, just do it in divisions. So say for instance, a county has, uh, is divided between two delegate districts. They don't have to uh, reprint or republish the entire ballot for each of those districts. They just show it uh, in the uh, different forms for that particular race that might appear within the county. 
Uh, Mr. President, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Otherwise, I would urge adoption of the committee strike and insert amendment. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? If not, question for the Senate is adoption of the Judiciary Committee amendment as explained by the Senator from Morgan. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the committee amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 2734 relating to reduced rates for low-income residential customers of privately owned sewer and combined water and sewer utilities. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2872 authorizing law enforcement officers to assist state fire marshals. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on Government Organization moved to amend the bill on page 1, section 7A, line 3, by striking out the word should be. I'm sorry. Hang on. I apologize. I was reading the wrong amendment. The committee on the judiciary moved to amend the bill by striking out everything after the enacting clause. The senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. I request uh, unanimous consent to explain the Judiciary Committee amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? The chair hears none. The Senator may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. The Judiciary Committee amendment is a strike and insert amendment for the entire bill. Uh, the uh, strike and insert amendment would amend a single section of the state code. It's Chapter 29, Article 3, Section 12. And that section addresses powers and duties of the state fire marshal. So the committee amendment makes a couple changes. First, it authorizes the West Virginia State Police and county and local law enforcement personnel to assist the state fire marshal and the state fire marshal's employees upon a request for assistance. Uh, the amendment also authorizes the fire marshal and a full-time deputy and assistant fire marshals to carry firearms while performing their official duties and it requires um, certification same as other law enforcement officers who are authorized to carry firearms uh, the bill the amendment would also grant the state fire marshal and uh, full on-time deputy and assistants arrest power to arrest people for violation of West Virginia Code 61517, which is uh, obstruction of officers. Mr. President, I'd be happy to try to answer questions. Otherwise, I urge the adoption of the committee's amendment. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? Not question for the Senate is adoption of the Judiciary Committee amendment as explained by the Senator from Morgan. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the committee amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 2958, authorizing the state auditor to conduct regular financial examinations or audits of all volunteer fire companies. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. The Committee on Government Organization moved to amend the bill on page 1, section 7A. The senior senator from the 17th. I ask unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The senator may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a committee amendment, but uh, House Bill 2958 purports to require the state auditor to audit all of the uh, volunteer fire departments at least once every five years. This amendment is technical to be consistent with the intent of the bill, changing that the audits should be so scheduled to say they shall be scheduled to make it more clear that it's mandatory. I urge adoption. Is there further discussion? The Senator from Nicholas County. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the uh, senior senator from the 17th Amendment. And it was a good amendment and made the bill stronger and encouraged the opportunities that uh, are before. So I encourage adoption of the amendment. Further discussion? Not. The question before the Senate is adoption amendment is offered by the senior senator from the 17th. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. The bill be advanced. Engrossed committee substitute for House Bill 3021 relating to the disposition of permit fees, registration fees, and civil penalties imposed against thoroughbred horse racing licensees. Second reading of the bill. 
Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 3045, exempting certain complimentary hotel rooms from hotel occupancy tax. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Engrossed House Bill 3095, establishing a minimum monthly retirement annuity for certain retirants. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. Bill be advanced. Are there further bills on second reading? No, sir. Bills on first reading. Engrossed House Bill 2009, creating a new category of innovation and education grant program. First reading of the bill. Bill be advanced. Introduction of guest. Remarks by members of the Senate. The senior senator from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to go back to Senate Bill 150, the budget bill. And uh, you'll notice on your desk that you have the budget presentation that everybody received in finance. And you have a side-by-side -side comparison for what's going on. Now, we laid it over one day today because we actually got a little bit ahead of our schedule in here on the House. And it hadn't been reported yet. So that's why we didn't go through the process today on what was on Senate Bill 150 and managing it. Now I'm going to make a request. I took Minority Leader reminded me of it, and thank you. Well, it's not you were to actually reaching out to me in such a way to let me know that if there was questions. If you've got questions on this, please get it to me or, or the staff upstairs so that I can actually be better prepared to f fulfill the questions. And it doesn't apply to just a minority. I mean, everybody in the chamber that's serving here, if you have questions, it'll make it go so much smoother so that I can be able to answer articulately tomorrow on what's going on rather than sometimes having the dumb look I have on my face. Uh, so I just wanted to reach out and remind everybody about that. Otherwise, you've got the resources here to know what's in the budget bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent that we return to consideration of House Bill 2958. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. The clerk has an amendment to Senate or House Bill 2958. The Committee on Government Organization moved to amend the bill on page one, section The seven senior eight. senator from the 8th. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I ask unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. Senator may proceed. Thank you. This amendment adds a proviso to the end of the bill to clarify that the state's auditor's office shall implement the policy to make certain that our volunteer fire departments can either some way be able to recoup their cost of any audit or that the auditor must completely cover the cost of the audit. I urge adoption. Is there further discussion? Senator from Nicholas County. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, this is uh, a committee adopted amendment. Uh, the senator's recommendation, his watchful eye, I urge passage. Further discussion? Not question before the Senate is adoption of the amendment to House Bill 2958 as explained by the senator, senior senator from the 8th. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have the ayes do. I have to declare the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. The bill be advanced. Remarks by members of the Senate. The junior, the senator from Tucker County. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief. I just want to uh, point out that we are in the uh, last week of session, and uh, uh, we still haven't. Or I can't say we haven't. We, uh, but the state hasn't did anything uh, about the roads. We still have the same road problems. Uh, Bill. 
255 is laying across the hallway in the uh, House of Delegates with, uh, I'm told, uh, no, probably not going to be considered. Uh, you know, the governor downstairs hasn't made any, uh, uh, what you would say, progress other than fact-finding missions. But I'm, I'm calling on the, uh, my colleagues to reach out to their colleagues against the hall or across the hall and the uh, governor's office to let's get something done with these roads because once we leave here after Saturday night, it's it's we're going back to our districts and we're going to have to explain to people why we didn't do anything with the roads again this year and senate bill 522 sorry not 25 or 255 uh, thank you to my colleague from the the 14th but uh you know it could be something as simple as the governor using the national guards to uh clean you know help clean the ditches because they have to do you know training every year anyway they could uh, grade the back roads they've got the graders they got the trucks you know this is a this is a state of emergency and I, i'm calling on you know the the governor and the colleagues across the the hallway there to let's do something about the roads uh, i think you know how passionate i am about this and i'd ask for my colleagues here in the senate to reach out to their counterparts on the other side and let's do something because this is the major concern for the citizens of the state of west virginia it's just not a one county problem uh, i know i'm preaching to the choir but this has to be taken care of. We cannot just keep on kicking the pothole down the road because uh, our roads are in terrible shape and, it, and it's a state problem and as far as I'm concerned, it's a state of emergency. Um, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. President. Further remarks, further remarks. Junior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to address the body and say that um, going into this final week of the session that um, I'd like to commend each and every one of the members of this body. There was a lot of comments made uh, to me over the weekend, and I'm sure each of us get these, especially when you go home and you talk to friends, family, etc. But, um, you know, they, they make comments like, how in the world do you guys do that down there? How do you how do you put up with that? All you guys do is name call and bicker and fight and and you disagree on everything. And I said, well, that's, that's not the truth. You know, the vast majority of the time, I think a lot of the public doesn't realize is we're in agreement. I don't know what the actual count is, 95, 98 percent of the time that board lights up green. You might have a couple against it. But um, especially in this chamber, it, um, we, we respectfully disagree from time to time. I know when I'm getting raked over the coals over something, whether it be from uh, the minority party or, or, or sometimes probably even worse from, from my own, uh, from the majority party, it's still done in a respectful manner. And at the end of the day, when we walk off the floor, uh, I have the utmost respect for each and every one of you that I serve with. Um, you know, the comment uh, that I try to explain to them is the analogy is often made that uh, the legislature is kind of like the uh, the ver proverbial ship of um, you know the majority party, regardless of which one's in charge, is driving the ship, and the minority party is yelling iceberg. But at the end of the day, everybody is wanting the passengers of that ship, which is the citizens of the state, to be delivered safely and, and in the best uh, manner we can. And so I'd like to thank uh, all members of this body. Let's go into this the last week, uh, pass the best legislation that we can for the good of all West Virginia. Thank you, Mr. President. Further remarks? Further remarks. Miscellaneous business, the junior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Pending announcements, I move the Senate stand in recess until 5.30 p.m. Are there announcements? The senior senator from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President. Your committee on finance will meet today at 3 p.m., 451 m and the agenda has been posted. Senator from Jefferson County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Senate Education Committee will meet tomorrow at 2 p.m. in room 451 m The agenda will be posted. Senator from Morgan County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your committee on the judiciary will meet today at 3 o'clock p.m. in room 208 West Wing. Senator from Marshall County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Health will meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. and 4.51 m. Senator from Brook County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on the Military will meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. and 208 West. Senator from Preston County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development will meet tomorrow, Tuesday, 9.30 a.m., 208 West. Senator, Senior Senator from the 6th. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Natural Resources will not be meeting today at 1 p.m., but will be meeting in the morning at 9 a.m. in 208 West. The, committee, the agenda has been posted. The Senator from Wood County. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance will meet today at 2 p.m. in 451. Further announcements. Further announcements. The Senator from Wetzel County. Mr. President, I ask the Education Chairman to please yield. Did you announce a meeting tomorrow morning? I No, I did not announce a meeting for tomorrow okay, morning. Okay, thank you. Your Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure will meet tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and 4.51 a.m. Are there further announcements? The Senator from Brooke County. Thank you, Mr. President. The Republicans will be caucusing at 1 p.m. in the Senate chamber. Thank you. Further announcements? Further announcements? Not question for the Senate. Shall the Senate stand in recess until 5.30 p.m. today? All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. Declare the Senate in recess until 5.30 p.m. today.